Hi, I'm Pete D. I work for Microsoft in the UK and uh, I'd like to show you how to get started with Git inside Visual Studio. So, Git was introduced into Visual Studio in Visual Studio 2013. So, let's have a little bit of background on Git. It was created in 2005 by Linus Torvalds as a source code management system for development of the Linux kernel. It, um, it has widespread usage in the open source community and is becoming increasingly popular within Microsoft of late, especially with the move into open source, um, with projects such as ASP.NET, .NET Core moving into GitHub and being worked on in the open. So Git is a uh, distributed source code management system and uh, to understand that it's useful to contrast against a more traditional centralised repository such as the one shown in this diagram on the left. So examples of this would be Team Foundation man version management, a force or subversion. And um, with this kind of a system, a developer would get, get files from the repository, which is stored on a central server. So it would get those across the network, work locally, and then submit change sets back to that server. And any kind of conflict management is done on that server. So if you, if you contrast that with the distributed model shown on the right, examples of this would be like Mercurial or Git. So in this case, the repository is located uh, locally at each node. So as a developer, I've got a complete copy of the repo locally on my machine. This is useful because it removes the reliance on network availability. Each node has a copy of the data, so um, uh, there's redundancy built into the system if there's, if there's any disaster recovery necessary and of course uh, all of the operations that I carry out uh, are done locally so this makes them very fast. Okay I've got a series of tips for anyone that's new to Git and, and wants to kind of learn Git. So the first tip is uh, read the Git parable. So um, this makes Git a bit more digestible for someone who's not used to all of the Git related jargon. If you look in the documentation online for Git um, it's kind of quite hard as a beginner to to penetrate and understand you know all of that jargon so this gives you a, a sort of dis description of the design of git without all of that jargon associated so the second tip is learn git from the command line first um, you, you can do this you, you know you, you can just go up to github create your own repo um, get hold of git on the command line start experimenting within your own sandbox um, you can install the resources that are shown on the screen there and you can work through the, the free ebook called ProGit, which you can download at the link that I've got on the screen. If you want to follow along with my demos, you can install the free community ver version of um, Visual Studio 2013 at the link shown. I'd recommend also installing GitHub or Windows, as it installs some kind of useful tools along with it and configures those. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to switch over to Visual Studio and um, I'm going to demo some of the Git integration there. I'm also going to show how to create a remote GitHub repository and I'm going to configure a very simple continuous deployment scenario using Azure Web Summit. I'm using Visual Studio 2013 Ultimate. All of the uh, features I'm going to use are in the Community Edition. <clears throat> so I'm going to create a web API to give us some source code to work with. Let's call it Web Apps London. API. I'm going to change the authentication to, to have no authentication. Okay, I just need to tab down to the OK button. So this is going to it's just downloading the NuGet packages. I'm just it's just going to create me an API project. And the first thing I'll do is I'll run that to show you what it does out of the box. So I'm going to hit this values controller which will return me an array of strings containing value 1 and value 2. So if I run that in the local development web server IAS Express and I navigate to API values then I can see I get some JSON returned which is an array of those two strings. Okay so let's add this to source control and see I get a choice between Team Foundation and Git 
I'm going to choose Git. Notice that I now have pending ads on these files. And if I navigate over to File Explorer, here is my Git repository folder. Now this repository is all contained on the file system. I'm not going to dive into it now, but if you use the ProGit book, you can kind of dig into this and learn and understand how it works. So the first thing I need to do is um, commit my initial ad. Initial ad, give it a message and press commit. And what that's going to do is that's going to take those files and it's going to add them to the local file system repository that I just showed you. Nothing has gone across the network at this stage. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little change in here. And you can see from Visual Studio has picked up that change shown by the little pending edit and the tick mark there. So again, I'm going to commit that locally to the repository. Added PD. Commit. So I've now got two commits in my local repository. So how can I visualize those? Well, much as you'd expect, I can um, view the history of this file now. And I can, I can see those two commits. I can compare them. I can look at the change sets. And there we see the changes. So this works much as you'd expect. Now, almost everything you do in Git involves a branch. So if you want to create a bug fix or you want to add a feature, the first thing you do is you go off and create a branch. It's a very lightweight operation in Git. It just involves creating a small file on the in the local repository file system, which points into a list of commit objects. So it kind of knows where it is in the stack. So I'm going to show you now how to create a branch. So Visual Studio has this dialog, which has a branches section. And I can come in here and I can say new branch. I'm going to call it feature one. And notice I've got this little checkout branch checkbox ticked. What that means is it's going to make the feature one branch my working folder. So by default, when you, when you create a Git repository, you have a master branch by default. And initially that will be your working folder. But I'm going to change that to the feature one branch now. So let's create that branch. And on that branch, I'm going to create a new change and I'm going to commit it into the local repository as before. So I've finished that feature and uh, you can imagine the situation I have now is that I have a master branch. Um, diverging from that, I have my feature one branch, which has a commit, which is the head of my master branch. So since I finished the feature, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to merge my feature branch back into the master branch. So let's come back to the branches page. And I'm going to choose to carry out a merge. And I can select from this dialog, I can select my feature one branch, and I want to merge that into the master branch. And actually, just before we do that, it's worth pointing out that if you can switch branches inside Visual Studio here, you can see I have a list of both of my branches. And as I switch, notice in the IDE, the actual files are changing. Um, that's quite an important concept to grasp. It kind of freaked me out the first time I did that. So what's happening is as I switch branches, that branch is becoming my working folder and all of the files are being rewritten in, inside that folder. OK, so let's merge feature one into master. And now if I switch branches, nothing happens because both of the branches are pointing to the same commit. OK, so let's now introduce a remote repository. I'm going to navigate over to github.com. I'm going to create a new repository in there. Let's call it WinApps London create. Once I do that, I get this URL here, which identifies my remote repository. And I can navigate back to the Team Explorer. And I'm going to find going to my unsynced commits. 
a Bion synced Visual Studio means that it hasn't been synced up to a remote repository. So I'm going to enter my URL in here and I'm going to hit publish. And what this will do is it'll package up my local repository and push it up to the remote server. So let's go back to GitHub and see what's happened there. So if I refresh this page, I can now see my source code. And I can delve in here and I can actually see the code, which is quite nice. So an API isn't much good on the local file system. So let's, um, let's publish this API now. Now I'm going to choose to publish it to Microsoft Azure websites. And let's create a new website, WinApps London. I'm going to put it in West Europe. And then let's let Azure create me a slot on a shared instance where I can host my my API. Uh, you can have up to ten of these kind of shared instances for free. So it's a very nice, useful, handy development tool. Okay, there we go. Notice it downloaded um, my published settings. So I'm just going to hit publish on this and it will push up my API. Whilst it's doing that, it's worth pointing out um, the updates to code lens also um, uh, reflect the, the changes in the Git repository. So you can hear at the see here at the class level, I have three changes. I can see who made that last change, Pete D70, less than five minutes ago, and also at the function level. Uh, I can come in here and I can see those change sets that I've I've added and uh, I can actually oops that's been published let's I can actually click on these and see the the details I can compare that file with the previous and I can see the changes that were made so that all works really nicely so since our API has now been published if I navigate to API values I should see see the latest values in there, Mike T, Pete D. And if I nip over to the, the Azure portal, I can find my website running on here. And I can navigate to its dashboard. And there's a little setting in here which says set up deployment from source control. So I'm going to choose that. And notice I have quite a few options in here. Codeplex, Bitbucket, Visual Studio Online, a local Git repository. I'm going to choose GitHub because that's where my repository is. And I'm going to choose my GitHub project from here, WinApps London, and I'm going to tell it to deploy the master branch. So that'll set up a little association with GitHub, between GitHub and Azure. Now that's done. And once that's done, I can... Um, Come back into Visual Studio. I can make some changes. Let's add Linus in here. I'm sure he'll be pleased by that. And again, I can come back to my project and I can choose to commit that change. This time I'm going to do it slightly differently. Let's say added Linus. Because notice on the commit button I have this little drop down here and I have the choice to commit, commit and push and commit and sync. I'm going to commit and push and what that'll do is it'll commit my changes locally and then it'll push package and push up my changes to the server. Once those changes are pushed up to GitHub, um, there's a hook running there on GitHub which will notice there's been a change and then it will publish up to the Azure website. So what I should have now so if I navigate back to the site, if I can find it, is I should be able to refresh this page. And that now reflects my latest changes. So that concludes the screencast on Git in Visual Studio. I'm Pete D. Thanks for listening.